The Floor Academy podcast is sponsored by Trelama, the trade labor marketplace, where businesses can find skilled trade labor, such as flooring installers, and where flooring installers and other skilled tradespeople can find permanent or project work. You can set up your profile at trelama.com, T-R-A-L-A-M-A.com, or download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play. And remember, Trelama is always free for skilled tradespeople. Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Phoenix, Arizona. We are here to talk with flooring professionals from all over the country about the issues that matter to you. I want to encourage you to learn while you earn. This week, we have returning guest Mike Somadeen. Mike owns and operates MSCS Inc. in the northern suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia. Starting flooring in 2003 and getting serious about it in 2016, he has come a long way, but he isn't done yet. We get to discussing why your business needs systems, from figuring out your true expenses to training to setting goals. Without the systems, you are choosing to fail. Listen in to learn how to succeed. Mike Somadine, are you there? I am. Awesome. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Welcome back to the Floor Academy podcast. Pleasure to be here. I don't know why me again, but... <laughs> because you called me and then said, hey, you're not talking about enough business stuff. And I said, all right, what do you got for me? And then you, you went on, we had like an hour long conversation while my kid was in swim class. And then I said, well, we now yeah. we need to have this conversation again. <laughs> <laughs> true true you you uh, you, hope, you did it to I'm, yourself hopefully i'm just uh yeah i uh that's true hopefully i'm just the one pointing the finger in the right direction and then uh uh some of the many 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 uh people more versed in this than me will chime on mm -hmm. no i think that's i think that's always the case right we just Somebody has to get the yep. conversation rolling and facilitate it, and then you know everyone comes in, and we can take that collective knowledge and really start forming some stuff. So, yep. um, no, I, I think agree. we got a, I think we got a good thing planned here. So, give me, uh, give me the quick, you know, overview of of Mike Somadine again, real quick, for those that may not have listened to your last episode. If you didn't listen to Mike's last episode, go back. It's called the American Dream. It's absolutely amazing, and um, you can't tell me that you can't make money in this business because, and that the American Dream doesn't exist because Mike's doing it. Yeah, I think maybe it would be a good idea for you to stop talking me up so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you are humble like I am, so it's okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, my name is Mike Samadine. Uh, I am a flooring contractor in Roswell, Georgia. That's uh, north suburbs of Atlanta. Uh, my company is MSCS Inc. Um, lots of uh, letters. It's actually an abbreviation of something. Mike Summerdean Construction Services, which was a, sort of a dream I had when I started that I'm going to do flooring and then a lot of other things. But as you can see, it just, uh, it just you know, shrink to MSCS because it's easier. Um, I've been in the flooring industry since 2003 when I came to the U.S. Um, was a gopher for a bit. 2006 is when I started on my own. Um, kept grinding away pretty much like everybody else, you know, subbing out from other people, working from donuts, <laughs> four donuts here and there. Uh, and then uh, 2016 is when I said, "Okay, I gotta, I gotta take this serious one way or another." Because I wasn't feeling myself and seeing myself progress too much, and that's when I discovered, you know, education and mm -hmm. uh, schools and you know, training in general, networking, and it, that kind of snowballed and got me to where I am today. Okay, I I like it. You. Uh... Those donuts, though, man, they're tasty. They're hard to give up. <laughs> uh, you know, it's uh, 
it's the sugar, man. It's the addiction. Cool. <laughs> you got to go back for more, even though maybe it's not healthy for you. Exactly. You know, it, it's fun. You get stuck. You, you open a business to make your life easier. And then you get stuck in this like rat race of living paycheck to paycheck because people want to pay you the donuts. And then you get the, sh- you know, you get that sugar rush, <clears throat> you get the money and you got to go back for another hit, another hit. It's, it's, it's as yep. bad as addiction problems. And so that's, that's it, what we're here to break. Know, it, it it doesn't really matter how uh, how bad the food that you just ate, but if you just ate, you're not that hungry, mm-hmm. you know. So that that was the deal with the donuts. You know, I I used to work those jobs. Money was ridiculous, but that's what it was at the time, and you know I was content on just being able to get those jobs, and you know pull through them and get paid for them. And yeah, Mm -hmm. business gets in the way of doing business at all levels. I think unless, which is what we're talking today, you get that structure going, you get that sense of direction. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a whole other aspect that I think it's not really being covered today too much because, um, you know, lately, Late last few years, um, all of the training and schools and information to, you know, better your skills and uh, train people to increase the quality of the work. That's been covered. It, it's and I think we all we should all be grateful for that and all the brands that are putting effort and money and time into that. Mm-hmm. But overall. Uh, that can help you as a business only up to a point. Yeah, you're increasing your quality, but there are all the other aspects that as long as you work on them and get them in place early on, I think that's going to dramatically affect the way you grow as a business. Because you can, you can become the best master in your trade and do the same thing over and over. Perfect job, perfect job, perfect job. But then five years, ten years down the road, those other aspects, if you didn't work on those, I think that that will actually hold you back. I agree. Um, you can – look, all the training that's available is absolutely amazing. The The efforts that the – certifying bodies put forth and the manufacturers put forth to make that happen is is great you know you get swag you get some food you get some training out of it you learn how products work you get you get better hand skills all of this is marketable but essentially what you're talking about is building systems to keep your business in order and you can't more money can be made behind the desk than on the floor and Absolutely. if someone's going to disagree with me on that we can go toe to toe anytime you want and because if you don't know what your numbers are if you don't know what it takes to get the project done and you don't know what things are really costing you and how to go and sell it and market it and make it all happen then yep. like mike said you can have the most amazing floors but that's only going to take you so far if you don't know how to sell those skills and use them properly to actually make you money exactly so you have this is this is a change for you right and so you're starting to put these things in place and they're not yes, all fully set so what are some of the steps that you've started to take so a little bit of a context right i am as probably as small as it gets uh one crew which i'm part of i own the business but i also do the work i used to have three four jobs at the same time that i would be subbing out uh, you know but again i'm i'm small mm-hmm. i know there are much larger businesses that uh have these systems in place or if they don't have them they are really struggling especially right now with covid since it's been it's been weird you know everybody was expecting the worst but it turned out that the last year i know for me i i couldn't even have dreamt of having such a good year last year yeah and i think that's the situation with everybody from what we read on the groups Mm -hmm. 
everybody's busy, everybody's swamped, everybody's complaining about labor shortage, all the other stuff. So especially now people are trying to focus more and more on getting the job, doing the job, but the business aspect, uh, the way you sell, your selling techniques, your marketing, your financial aspect, and all of those are probably being overlooked. And for myself, uh, that was the case up until late last year. I was focused on, you know, the transition to just one crew again. Okay. I was selling better jobs, you know, getting higher prices, more custom stuff. But then as the year kind of came to an end, I started thinking about, okay, uh, tax season, get all my ducks in order for that. Where do I stand? Kind of, you know, in retrospect, what kind of year I had, because I knew the jobs that I was doing, but let's look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. So I am using a certain uh, a platform for all my uh, estimating, lead capture, you know, reports and all of that. But it's I, I haven't really been keeping on top of it. So in November, October, I think is when I started. I I think I spent five or six whole nights, like from ten in the evening till six, seven o'clock in the morning, trying to go through back through all my notes, all everything I had on every job. And it, that, that was a nightmare. I, bet. I would have, <laughs> trust me, I would have preferred to go, go out and sand the worst floor ever instead of doing that, <laughs> you know, and, uh, accounting, same thing. Uh, I was using an accountant who was decent, but then when, Things got a little more serious. The numbers got bigger. You know, he was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I reached out to an accounting firm, small business accounting firm. I found them on LinkedIn. Uh, they were actually following me too for a while, which again brings us to the other aspect of marketing, the online presence, you know, networking, using that. I reached out to them. Uh, I was a little shocked at the quote they gave me to straighten everything out. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you right now, like, you know, six months in, that was probably the best money I've spent since I've been in this business on anything business. That's funny. You know, it's it's funny you say that because <clears throat> you'll spend six grand to buy your sander, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you have a Hummel or something similar, right? Like, you're, it's going to be like six grand yep. to get this thing. That's your money maker. That's what's going to do a lot yes. of the work. Except you just said whatever this accountant accounting firm charged you to straighten out your books and be able to actually give you numbers and reports that can make sense mm -hmm. so you can look over and review this stuff was better yeah. money spent. And I couldn't agree with you more. Like I have my bookkeeper, she's awesome. Um I don't pay a lot because I don't give her a whole lot of stuff, but you know, I'm still, what am I at now? I think I just had to cut her a check for like 900 bucks for like six months. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like 150 a month or something like that. It's, I'm not paying a ton of money, but yeah, it's the fact that everything's organized. She sends one report or two reports off to the, to the um, accountant at the end of the year that does my taxes. Yep. I send a couple more pieces of paper that I have for like individual home stuff. It's all taken care of. I get P and L's every month. I can look them over. I can see what I sold versus last year and the year before that. Like when yeah, all this that, information that, is available to you, it changes. That in itself do. becomes a tool for you to tweak uh, other things to improve. You know, you, you mm -hmm. actually, cause every, it's easy to say, uh, I know my numbers, right? Like I know this is how much flooring costs. This is how much I pay for. It. I'm, and I'm sorry to only have references about hardwood flooring, but that's no, what I do. Good. I know your audience is from other fields as well. But that's not what knowing your numbers means, you know, because you can you can job cost a project and be dead on and then build on that. But are you job costing that project to also include your... Uh, cost of doing business you know Correct. all your overhead and all of that 
and it if if that doesn't because that's my case i had i didn't do all of those things early on and when i really said okay this doesn't cut it anymore i have to i was looking at everything i gotta do once i found the information and i talked to the right people and i was looking at the amount of work that i have to put into that and it was like this huge huge undertaking mm-hmm. you know so even in that i'm i'm still working to kind of get some structure to see how which one is priority number one which one you know and not get overwhelmed because if you just do a little bit of it yeah it might be better than nothing but still take it all the way because it is going to make your life a lot easier down the road mm-hmm. uh I know I, I was involved in a in a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, courtesy of Loba, uh, and it was nothing to do with product, with you know marketing themselves. It was basically a a meeting to kind of focus on what steps can be taken to better ourselves in business and the industry overall. Uh, and I had the privilege to be at the same table for a couple of days with some people that I consider legends and I look up to. And we're talking Chris is a Spriglin, John Lessig, uh, and the things uh, the things I I took from that meeting is I have ton of work to do to get anywhere close to the ballpark where those people are as far as running the business Mm -hmm. you know uh, well let's uh, i i get what you're saying let's let's take a, a look at this right so we as as craftsmen right we we see the big check like this is generally how the story goes right you you start off mm-hmm. working for somebody you see that invoice you see that the boss is making 10k and you're like man i got to get that money so then you go and yep. you start charging something and you're getting like $7000 checks and you feel good what yep. we don't realize is often you know we're good with our hands we're not good at business what happens when you go and buy a franchise for McDonald's or Taco Bell or something like that, right? You buy an entire system. They've already worked all the kinks out. They have training programs to teach you how to do your books, how to figure out your costs and your overhead and maintain and track it all. Like you go and you buy all of this and there isn't necessarily anything. That's the biggest value of those things in my opinion. Correct. You're buying a system that's tried and true and there isn't Mm -hmm. anything you can really do like, well, what I, what's that what's that company that sells franchises for flooring what, yeah like mr sand at all or i don't even know what it's called oh but, it, it used to be are we naming names we we can i don't care they're not making any money off of me so, so it used to be mr sandless <laughs> there you go um, okay and then but that that i think that kind of died down but you were bit. just buying the a name to get projects they didn't i don't i don't think there was like a system behind it right i don't think you got like a whole marketing plan and advertising in your area and how to you know get your numbers and all of that yeah i I know i remember looking into them uh not because i was interested but i'm i'm kind of stalking anything that could be competition so i'm i like to stay on top of those things Mm -hmm. yeah their marketing wasn't great the biggest uh, thing they were selling was, you know, the lack of dust and uh, the, the products that they were using, you know, painless, less intrusive than a regular send and finish and all of that. Yeah. But then I I know I, I spoke to somebody who actually bought into the franchise and I think they were like 50% success rate. The other 50% were going to end up in resands anyway, because they didn't set the right expectations. Yeah. It's it, yeah, you, so. you weren't buying a complete system. You were buying this name and then you were able to sell jobs and it was based on subbing yeah. out too, wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't even like you were out there. They didn't train you to do the work. You, you were like supposed to hire 
subs to go and yeah. do it. So, yeah. but anyways, I you can go and buy businesses where you get all of this stuff. This is a trade where unless you, you spend time learning this yourself or you go to school mm-hmm. for it or you start listening to podcasts like this and other business podcasts, right? Like you're not going to and listen to audio books or whatever you're going to do. Like you have to get yep. this education somewhere. And yep. I, that's... Sure. That's the biggest thing. And so now you've seen like, you know, we had Sprig on and, and we kind of talked systems a little bit. And I can tell that his business is highly organized. You know, there is a yes. system in place for everything from bringing it's, new people on and training them to how you're going to take the money and, and put it in the bank account to how it gets divvied up and accounted for. Like everything has a way of doing it. And it's written down probably in a book and somebody you can hand somebody a reference manual and say, this is how we do things. Correct. And uh, another person that was in that meeting and you you had on uh, John Namba, same thing. Okay. Yep. That that business is like crystallized efficiency. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In everything. There's no there's no. scratching in the back of your head how do i do this and that's going to hold you back from actually you know what i mean so you don't have to figure things out when they literally hit you in the face uh, when you bid a job when you have to submit uh documentation about you know your business when you have to maybe apply for a loan mm-hmm. right uh submit financials and that kind of stuff uh, when you have marketing strategies, like, okay, what's my target customer? Put myself in the shoes of that customer. What would draw them to hire me or to buy my product? You know, build certain campaigns. And again, uh, during that meeting, I heard some people talking about it and they had it down to a science, like down to the decimal point, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was amazing. It, it was, it was super impressive for me. And, Again, uh, I'm I'm trying. I've been trying to get some direction, and that that meeting helped me a lot. Oh, a lot. I bet. I mean, just being able to be. I don't. I always say you want. It, well, I don't always say it. I've heard it, and I try and do it. I want to be the dumbest person in the room. To be honest. Yep. So and it's, that's, that's a good room that to was, be in. <laughs> that was me in that room, man. I, it that, sounds I'm, like it, I'm but that's a <laughs> that's a great place to be in a position to be in. Um, that's that's true. The other thing you were saying is that we we need to know all of our numbers and that we're not including. You know, okay, yes, I can do three hundred feet of of sand and finish complete in a day, right? Like if that, I, and I don't know if that's a realistic number. Maybe it's more. Whatever it is, right? Like if I only had three hundred yeah. feet to do, I'm going to walk in. I'm going to sand it all. And I'm going to get the finish down and I can be I can be done in a day or I have to come back and do the second coat the next day. OK, and that's a couple hours, yeah. but I can do that after I start the other project or whatever. That's great. Like that gives me a, a way to base my numbers. But when I'm not including the gas, the time to bid, um, the time to call the distributors and order products and pick those up. And uh, when you're missing hours and hours of your time that you're not accounting yep. for and being paid for when you don't look at this stuff. If you're not including your insurances and, and mm-hmm. everything like, so and just a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of times, like the, the most obvious thing people are not, especially if they work in the field, they're not including their own pay. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I've got uh, three guys, apprentices, leads, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I pay them this much per hour per hour plus, I'm paying this much for workers' comp, general liability for each one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a $25 an hour guy is actually a $37 guy, a dollar an hour once you count all those things in. You know, so you, you add all those together uh, and then, okay, this is my labor. No. If you were on that job, the job, the, the time that you spent selling the job, any trips that you took back, yeah, that's your time. That should also be paid because you are – employed correct you know, and uh, even if you're not there you still have to mark up what you're not charging 37 dollars an hour for each of these guys that cost you 37 dollars an hour all in you got to be charging 50 dollars an hour 
because you got to make yep. some profit or something. You, you can't, you know, I would charge even more than 50, but the, Mike's correct yeah. in that you need to include, if, if you're an owner operator, you're darn right. Your time needs to be in there. Like I know my, the biggest thing that I've been on lately is I think a good salary for any person doing any type of flooring in the floor trade, right? We, we should make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now in Phoenix in Atlanta, that that's a good number. Rural Georgia, maybe it's 85,000 because cost of living is slightly different in Los Angeles and Manhattan. Maybe it's 125. All right. Like there's going to be some differences, but at the, at the end of the day to make a hundred thousand dollars, you need to have a bare minimum payment of $500 a day to yourself, 250 days a year. So that gives you five day weeks, 50 weeks a year. So you get a two week vacation and you get weekends off. Um, you're going to make the, the $500 will get you 125 K you're going to pay taxes. It ends up being like $96,000. Okay. Not, not bad. All right. There's, there's your hundred K. Okay. But here's the thing. A lot of people look at that and they're like, yeah, okay. $500 a day. That's sweet. I can still like, I can, I can pay for my truck and I can, I can buy my tools and no, 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 no. That hundred K is for you. Now yep. you the now truck, you need to add in truck. all the extra stuff to make the payment on the company vehicle, buy tools, pay your insurances, right? So now we're not five hundred dollars a day, we're six hundred dollars a day plus. My goal is eight hundred to a thousand a day. That's going to cover mm-hmm. everything. Plus, that's going to cover days I don't work because honestly, I'm still learning and growing, and I don't stay busy fifty weeks a year. Maybe I have a job that takes four and a half days. And I'm not going to fill a half day somewhere. So like you got to make a little more one day and a little less another day. And it all kind of averages out. But yeah, that's, you have to to balance it out. That's what Mike's kind of getting into when he's saying, you know, you got to look at all the numbers. And so you got to figure out what those actual numbers are. Like is $800 going to cover everything for you? I don't know. For me, I know it covers everything because when I need to go buy a tool, I look at my bank account. I know where it's at. And I can go buy the tool. I don't have to think twice about it. I don't have to ask my wife. The business has its own money that can be spent on the business. So as long as I'm making wise choices, then I can look and say, yeah, $400 for that's no big deal. $1,000 for that's no big deal. I can afford that right now. Yep. Um, <clears throat> that that also, you know, getting getting the business set up that way where each expense is worked into what you sell, whether it's products and services, right? Mm-hmm. We can we can cover this for hours and hours. Like, oh yeah, you know, you 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 provide services. You use tools. Okay, uh, you need tool depreciation, correct? Ideally, every four or five years, you would be replacing your whole arsenal of tools, right? So yeah. you have to work that cost into. It. Uh, maybe you're going to grow. You need a shop. You need a space. You need a storefront. Yep. Again, each and every one of those things, all the way down to, I don't know, landscaping on on the common grounds where your you know shop is. Anything, yeah. anything yeah. like that. All those expenses should be included in your job costing. Correct. So once you get the business set up that way, or without getting the business set up that way, that concept of the business running itself and you being able to step away from it. Uh, that that's not achievable in my opinion unless you got all of those other aspects figured out and you know systems put in place you have to have a way to show somebody how to do what you do if if you can't yep. train somebody and you're just like winging it and kind of showing them as you go along mm-hmm. that it's not going to work and i think this is why we've done our I, this is a whole different conversation i don't want to go down this road um We've done ourselves a disservice. Like we always complain that we can't keep help around. How many of you have a system in place on how to train somebody? How many of you actually have a written system of how you're going to take somebody from greenhorn to master installer? And I don't care if you're a carpet guy, tile guy, hardwood guy. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you just do floating floors like me. Mm -hmm. You have to have a written training program down. How do you advance? How do you get a raise? How do you learn something like you start putting these things in place and you show people and you can hold them properly accountable. It's going to change your business. It's, it, it's the same. It's going to work for the money. 
It's going to work for training. It's going to work for being able to hand something off to a manager if you want to grow your company that big. The, all of this plays together. That I think that's what Mike really wants to drive home is that it, it doesn't matter what part of your business you're talking about. You have to have a system for it. Otherwise, you're you're playing businessman and contractor instead of being a businessman and a contractor. Yep. And uh, before getting, there are a lot of things in in this perspective that are general. Doesn't matter. Like, like you said, you're doing floors, like solid hardwood, you're doing sand and finish only, you're doing carpet, carpentry, everything. They're general <clears throat> to the business side. Then when you figure out your numbers, that's going to vary. Like if you, maybe there's people who only sand, uh, you know, bad looking floors, lower price, and that works for them. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. But you have to have it for that one too, you know you charge two bucks a foot okay you make it work you make a decent living everybody makes a decent living it's your choice but even in that perspective it needs to be worked in you know all of your all of your expenses otherwise if you just work and think in ballparks i don't think you're ever going to advance from that I and agree. there's a very good chance that it's going to come back and bite you in the ass at one point well, this is why people end up eating jobs. If you you got to charge enough to cover what you're doing, right? If you can't even afford to, if you're living paycheck to paycheck based on deposits that you're getting and work you're completing, and you screw a job up, you can't afford to to do a resand on it because yep. you don't have the money to pay for next week. So that's true. And you're 100 percent right. Like if you don't know what you're doing. You gotta figure it out, people. Yeah, and it's gonna screw up your schedule, and then you're not just losing the money that you're spending to redo that job. You know, because again, uh, it it depends on each individual's situation. But some things are widely available. You know, you need to get them down to a science, uh, so that you know which direction you're heading, and it's also gonna show you what you need to fix, what you need to adjust, mm -hmm. what you need to improve. You know, um, I'm, I'm trying to do that. So I got the, the accounting part done. Mm -hmm. um, I am working on, on the marketing side, um, trying to rethink what my target customer is. Okay. And then uh, adjust my menu so to say for that yeah and that's yeah, yeah. all that that's that's another idea that i got from john basic with apex in chicago uh, i have to i am starting to change some things as far as labor goes with my apprentice uh based on some things that i got from chris ziza and uh sprig as well so I guess the next thing uh, after deciding to work on these systems is, you know, trying to figure out where you get the information, where, where do you learn this stuff? And in my case, uh, this is one thing that that's been kind of haunting me since I, uh, since I went on my own, mm -hmm. I didn't really have mentors. I didn't have models. Uh, that that's my situation. I all the people that I was interacting with uh, on the business side, mm -hmm. uh, they were you know out just to fend for themselves or trying to push you, hold you down because they didn't want you to get ahead of them and you know that kind of thing. Cur that's why it's I, I everyone, say that my yeah, yeah. it's the standard yeah. competition fear, right? You're gonna go and do better than yeah. me, and you're gonna make me lose work. Well. Dude, you live yeah. you live in Atlanta, so that's funny because it's a big city. There's yeah, plenty that, of work. That's why I but... keep saying that my career has two stages. I'm in the second one. The first one was 06 to 2017, where I was just you know mm -hmm. trying to earn that bread, maybe get enough money for to put some butter on it as well. Uh, but then 
I I started to rethink some things. My son was born in in 2016. You know, and I'm. I, I couldn't just keep doing the same thing like yeah. day in, day out with no progress, with no direction, so to say. You, you know? got to get that caviar, buddy. Exactly. That's, what, that's so, what we're after. So what education and schools and networking got me were those models. If you If you want to go down a certain path, you need to see – not necessarily a, just a destination, but also step stones, stepping stones, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, just like you said on the training side, you need to give people a path, a clear path with milestones that need to be achieved. So same thing on this. Networking, I found some models, some people that I that I admired, I looked into everything that I could as far as uh, their business and the way they do things. And I'm like, okay, I need to do it like him. Or I need to, how, how does that other guy do his marketing that it's so well? Okay, mm-hmm. I hear about that other guy. He has 38 employees and everything seems to be running smooth and, you know, uh, systems. Yeah. Systems. And then, what I did, I started to reach out to them because there's no shame in that. Nope. And these people, these people are actually people that we would also be talking about on the training side. All the people that are very good and they are sharing and they do want to help others. They actually do exactly the same thing on the business side. Ask the question, you know, make a phone call, send an email message, private message, anything. Reach out if you have those questions on the business side. And I, I did that. And again, I'm, I'm starting to see some improvement. I know I am. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of a lot more uh, inner peace on some of those things. <laughs> and it, it is working a, a lot, a tremendous amount of work that I, that I have to do. But for the little that I've done, I am still... I am seeing tremendous results. Well, I think just running a business in general can be crazy, right? It feels like you're probably trying to like lasso the bull half the time and like get in there and and Mm -hmm. hog tie it up and wrestle it to the ground. And you've got fires to put out over here and over there. And so once you start making these goals and these steps and putting things in place and it becomes easier to manage it, it's, it makes you feel good. Um, the other thing you're talking about is reaching out to people. And I highly encourage any, there are so many good people in this industry. I mean, look, this podcast is an example. Okay. This is me reaching out to people that I find have interesting things to say. And we talk about them. So, you know, Sprig, it was amazing to me that like Spriglin reached out to me to be on the, on the podcast, but You know, I could have reached out to him at any time and he gladly would have said, yes, I know that. And there's there's plenty of other people that all you all I have to do is make the phone call and don't get stuck in the in the flooring world. You don't your mentor doesn't have to be from here. If you see somebody in your area, like let's say you go to an ice cream shop with your family all the time, man, if they're running things really well, talk to the owner. They have systems guaranteed. Those systems can translate over. The The principles are generally the same. So you just have to find out what they're doing to be successful. And you can take those habits and make them your own. It, you don't have to find somebody in flooring. It, it, it's Honestly, it's helpful. I need to find someone locally that I can work with as well. Because it's not always helpful to have someone 100 miles away, 1,000 miles away trying to help you and coordinate phone calls and and things like that but that option does exist with the technology we have so i agree it's i I, i'm a hundred it's it's totally important to find these people and and work with them and learn and grow and and realize we have shortcomings like it doesn't have to be as hard as it is and we don't have to battle through it every day there there are better ways and there are people 
that will gladly help you. They, they're waiting to be asked the question, to, honestly. Like they, it puts joy in their face to give back and, and watch somebody else start to succeed. Yep. And it's like, you, for, for anyone, uh, you can just keep doing what you're doing and you're going to hit these uh, walls and you will figure out a way, probably, right? Mm-hmm. You will figure out how to uh, do your taxes, for example. There's information about that as well. But is that the best way to spend your time and money? Mm-hmm. Probably not. Because we are like on the training side, on the skill side. We are trying to get what faster and better with installing, with sanding, more efficient. So I think the same, the same focus should be on those other aspects of the business. Try to be more efficient. Try to be faster. Try try to make it easier mm-hmm. on that side because you want to cram more projects, more sales into into your uh, month or week. That's going to help you do it. Correct. If you can learn to be better behind the desk and better on the floor, you're going to grow. You're going to be way more successful in all aspects. And you don't even have to grow a crew. It doesn't matter if it's just – if you want to work by yourself forever, so be it. But you can still do it at a higher level on both sides. Exactly. So, all right. Well, kind of let's get back to you a little bit. So you, you, you've paid the accountant, right, and you've done – you, you have numbers coming in now. So, and then you're, you're tweaking your, your menu. I like that you call it a menu. I hope you actually have like a folder you can present your clients with and say like, here's your options and finishes and, and wood types. And like, it's, it's, if you made an actual menu, I think that would be cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's in the works actually. Okay. Um, where is all of this taking you? Like, has it, are do you have enough info on your numbers so far that you actually know like what it costs to run your sander every day and what it's like have you have you upped your rates because you realized that you were 50 cents short and everything to actually cover expenses properly like where has having the proper accounting in place taken you in in my particular case it helped me understand my margins a lot better and surprisingly I, it was a little better than I thought it would but I also saw that there's room to also improve those margins mm-hmm. and I did find some things on on the material cost that I would need to adjust it also helps me with uh, nailing down a system uh, a sequence for example when, when we do sand and finish I figured out that I'm between a couple of systems that I prefer, one of them is uh, is more cost effective. If if I if I think of cost versus time, I nailed down one certain one particular system sequence that helps me get to the quality level that I need to get faster. Mm-hmm. And the cost for that, again, when you when you also take time into consideration, is better than the other two sequences. Okay. So, so from now on, I'm just gonna, you know, apply that sequence, and have obviously be prepared to apply the others if that one doesn't work. But I will, I will lean towards always using that. That that's that's one. It, you know, trying to figure these things out. I tried. I figured out the the numbers as far as cost. Mm-hmm. And it helped me make a decision on choices for materials, for example. And it's not just based on price, again. Because I also take time into consideration. Uh, uh, another great guy that I that I uh, used to keep in touch with uh, for a while now, and I also met in, uh, in North Carolina, Tony Horseman said, paper costs less than man hours. Yeah. So don't just think, you know, this is how much a 60 grid belt costs. Okay, how much more time are you going to use if you use this belt versus that belt? Well, we're not, so. I, I don't know the cost of belts, but uh, you know, I know that there's all these fancy belts you guys are talking about lately with like ceramic 
stuff in them or what you what like norton blaze and blue and red. i don't even know man i don't look I, I i follow along but i'm not that close in it so yeah that's what's the difference in so between like a a regular 60 grit 3m belt and like a, a norton blaze 60 grit belt like what's the actual price difference roughly um Tell you the truth, I don't know because I don't know what a 3M belt costs. <laughs> okay. I will like standard, like, you know, older 20 year old technology, you know, like what's a, what's a regular 60 year belt, you know? I, I think you're about 30% higher on the Norton side. I might be wrong again. Yeah. But as far as, uh, say, so you're like 10 versus like 13 or something. Lifespan, like that. as far as lifespan for the belt, as far as the, uh, scratch pattern and how that affects your next cut and how much time it saves because you don't have to get out that nasty gnarly scratch pattern mm-hmm. that price difference is going to translate in a lot in a lot, a lot of a difference a lot a, a different uh, number by the end of the job mm-hmm. because you spent more time you, it, it affects your schedule in the long run, correct? Correct. Because uh, now you're maybe you have to throw down another cut uh, in in between the two that you were making because your following cut is not going to get out that scratch. That that that's what I was talking about when I was saying great sequences. Correct. No, I, I I the ones that I correct. Prefer. I but that's I the point I'm trying to make is I, we're talking. 30% what what's it going to be like 3 to 8 dollars and then you're talking about the man hours where you got to pay somebody 25 30 dollars an hour like yep. you can't you can't pinch a penny and and get two look my mother could do it we're not all my mother okay like that lady is she's I don't know how she does it she's crazy but uh, <laughs> for most of us Spending an extra ten dollars on something to be quicker and more efficient is going to net us thirty dollars on the back end. But this is once again, this goes back to saying, when you actually know your numbers, you can make more money at the desk than you can in the field because in the field you're only looking at costs, and that's not yes. going to do it for you because you're not taking into consideration all the costs. You're taking into consideration one cost. Yeah, you're going to save $3 on a belt and it's going to cost you an extra $25, $50 because you need two more hours to cut that floor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, it's silly. It, there's a difference between uh, trying to be efficient with the price and the cost and penny pinching. Yes. You know. Definitely. So you've you've started improving that stuff. You have a solid sequence that you can look at. You have you have a total of three, so I'm assuming you have them ranked like one, two, three, and then you can look at a project and determine. Yes, this is which one we need to use. Um, do you have that written up now so your apprentice knows? Like when we walk in a house, this is what we're going to no, evaluate we, to determine. No, and we then... we develop them together. We've been we've been testing. Uh, different papers, different mm-hmm. minerals, different grits, different sequences for about a year now. Okay. You know, and it, it's not something I, I will have to because that's that's also in in the future to hire more people. So I will have to get it in writing, sort of as a manual, as a checklist. Uh, but that's that's gonna come with territory with with time. Yeah. Okay. We, as long we as we have them, we do know them. Yeah. You're, you're planning on putting it down so the next person that comes in can have. Here's the written manual. This is what we're evaluating. This is what we're doing. This is how you determine: Are we going to use sequence one, two, or three? So, yes, you're gonna uh, you're gonna get there. Manual, but that's that's also gonna you know I'm I'm not a big fan of do this because I said so or because it's written in that manual. I I like to explain and get people to understand okay this is why we use that paper mm-hmm. versus the other paper mm-hmm. this is why you you know do this movement with that machine and not that movement and you know 
Correct. Um, I'm more of an, a fan of organic uh, learning, not just memorizing stuff. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Okay. I Look, I 100% agree with you. Like, if we're not giving them the reasons why and we're just telling them this is how we do it, they're never going to understand mm-hmm. why we actually do it that way, and they're going to fight against it. When they can actually yeah. see the it- reason why it works better... I, I agree, but I, I still think it, it needs to be written down somewhere that like this is why we do it. But then as you're working them through all these different steps, mm-hmm. you can cover that material and say, this is why we're doing it this way or that way. It, it's not you don't have to explain that all in the manual. Right. But it can say, like, look, this is we, we come in and we're going to do X, Y and Z. And then as you're training them, you work through yeah. why we do X, Y and Z. The, the, the manual yeah, so doesn't it, have it would... to be the foolproof method. Correct, and that that would be more of a list of conversation points when it comes to training people on those on that checklist. You know, yeah. so yeah, we use Norton Blaze Fifty Grit as the first pass. This is why, you know, yep. because when you're training, you're not necessarily training new people. Maybe you're training somebody who comes from a different uh, different outfit, different company, and they were using, you know. 3680, yep. 3M, or whatever other brand. <laughs> uh, so I would I would actually show why we are going for that sequence, what the difference is, and in the long run, why uh, it's better than the other choice okay. or what they used to use. So you're going to actually set up the machine and run them through different air, like test areas on the floor and show them what the process is going to look like if you were to go through the different sequences in an or in a certain yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. That, absolutely. I, that's a training program, well, man. That's <laughs> that's a system. Yeah, but that that also trains um, understanding. Mhm. And you know, and that that helps in, in all perspectives. Okay, the logical uh, explanation for that choice or the other. This is why we do things the way we do because as they progress in training, they will get to the point where, yes, they will teach others. So if everything they have to show is just a manual, it's not going to help much. You know, I everybody, if you, if you hire them, one of their, you know, in their job description is yes, to do whatever their hands on job is, but also to be, to, to represent the company as far as image and as far as values and direction. Right. So, yeah, he's going to have to be working towards making that company efficient and sticking to those systems. And if why not improving those systems, if there's uh, suggestions, if there's like, you know, there's nothing wrong with coming in and opening a discussion with, okay, I think we could do better on that side because of this. Mm hmm. You have any, um, I got to assume with all the changes you're making, part of, part of your system now is having goals. Not that you didn't have yes. goals per se before. I know a lot of guys, like, I I'm, I know why I'm in the boat I'm in this year. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't write any down. I didn't print them out, and I didn't put them where I put them that I can see them every day. So yeah. I, I've... I've really like sabotaged myself this year in my business. Um, I, I'm assuming you have, if you weren't doing it before, you definitely are doing it now to where you have like written stuff out and you can, it's somewhere you can routinely see it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do. I do have a, I do have a book that I jot down things in. Okay. And I do have some things that are circled and I, I go back to, reread them every once in a while how much of it are are you writing when you're putting them down are you putting just a big lofty goal or are you breaking it down into like subsections of like okay i can take this step and then this step and this step and then i'll be there i have a few pages uh one that just has a list with a general one line that describes that goal and then uh, a separate page for that where as they come to me, I write down steps that I could mm-hmm. take, you know, to reach that goal. Okay. But again, I'm still, I'm still learning how to even do that. 
you know, like, but you're okay, breaking, I want yeah. to, but you're breaking it down. You're, you're turning it into yes. a system. I, I think a lot of times people write goals, right? Like everybody, okay, what's the big goal everybody gets for, you know, new year's I'm going to lose weight. How, how are you going <laughs> to yeah. do it? How, how are you going to do it? You, you can put down that you want to lose 50 pounds all you want, but then mm-hmm. everybody quits the gym after the first week and they don't lose the 50 pounds. Break mm-hmm. down how you're going to lose the 50 pounds. Man, I know uh, I've heard stories of people that literally they, they wanted to start losing the 50 pounds. They would go to the gym. They would drive there, the 20 minute drive or whatever from their house. Walk yeah. into the gym, turn around and leave. He made hey, the, they made check, the first that, step, though. That's that checks it. a box. Correct. You made it to the gym. Mm-hmm. You do that for a week. The next week you go and you sit at a machine. Okay. It's little steps, right? You can't, you're not going to lose the 50 pounds at once. You have to understand that. It's going to take work. It's going to take effort. You're changing habits. So if you don't break it down, right, you can put down on your board, I want to do $2 million in revenue. Well, that's overwhelming. I've never done over 350. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. How, what am I going to do? To get to two million, I'm gonna have to change my marketing. I'm gonna have to get some employees or subcontract out to people. I probably need a retail shop, and then I need to start breaking down all these things. How am I gonna hire the people? How am I gonna get the retail shop? How am I gonna cover that bill? And you you start making subsections, and now you have a path to follow. But just exactly. the just the two million dollars, I don't know. I, I have no idea how to do that. That's I don't even want to look at that goal because it's overwhelming. That's the that's the biggest problem I think. Um, you're doing things pretty well right now, you know, or good enough, mm-hmm. and people plateau. Yeah, I'm here. It's comfy. I don't need to go any any higher, any further, get any better, you know, Correct. more efficient because this this works. I think when they do start to think about what steps they have to take and they have that list figured out, that's a, that's a big shock because it is overwhelming. Like it, It's overwhelming for me when I just think about all the things that I should do and I know I could do and the results that those would bring. It is overwhelming and I am not, I'm I'm the first to say I'm not the most disciplined person. Um, I could have been way further if I was by now, but it's never too late. Yes, I'm I'm turning forty this year, and it, it for some reason it kind of gives me a sense of urgency. Um, as far as you know, not procrastinating anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that that might have something to do with it. That's funny you say that. I I turned thirty and I like looked at where I was at in life and I was like, I really got to get my shit together. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, feel I, I feel I, good about forty coming up. So I turned thirty nine in October and then forty will be next year. And I'm like, I'm at least on the right track to like feel a little bit better. But I I, I feel you. Like you started evaluating where you're at, right? And you're like, uh, mm-hmm. I, need to, I need yeah. to figure some and, things out. And even that in itself is hard sometimes because, you know, you keep doing what you're doing day in, day out, day in, day out. And sometimes you forget to, like, you know, just stop for a second, look at the bigger picture, Mm -hmm. find if you're still on the path you thought you were on, Mm -hmm. are you still going in the direction you wanted to go? Because, you know, business gets in the way of doing business. You're too, you're too busy doing the work to be able to tweak the way you're doing the work and get you where you want to go because yeah, I'm not going to do that today because I still have to finish that job. And then you get a call and then you got to jump, jump into the next job. Yep. And before you know it, it's been six months since you said, okay, I'm going to go do this or I'm going to go talk to that client or interior designer or something too, you know, and I haven't. I haven't mm-hmm. reached out. Well, it's not just that. I think I, it goes back to you being um, it goes back to you being MSCS, right? You you start yeah. 
a lot of people offer more than one service. Like I niche into laminate luxury vinyl plank engineered hardwood. For me, they all mm -hmm. work the same way. All right. Wood's a little different, but sticking some yeah. glue down and acclimating, it's not that, that really that hard. Essentially, they all go together the same. But when you start being somebody that does tile, carpet, wood, floating, how do you, you got to look at where you're most profitable and where you invest yeah. your time. If you're chasing every idea, you're cheating yourself because you're not building the thing that can actually make you money. Like I was, I, after having that conversation that I had with Matt Garcia about him having the bone and power scrubber, I can see how mm -hmm. I can make tons of money by buying a, a power scrubber. I don't care what brand. And oh, you won't want to have one for sale. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a dollar because I don't need that distraction right now. <laughs> but I can buy one and I can start cleaning LVP floors in my area because they're all the rage. Everybody has them. And they all wonder how to get them clean. I can go in and charge 50 cents a square foot and be in and out in a couple of hours. It'd yep, be easy, but easy money. But now, easy, now, but I'm, but now I'm trying to build away... another business. Which exactly. business do I want to build? Right. You can't. You can't do that. Pick one, get the systems in place. Then you can put add-ons in once it's running cleanly. And that's how you can grow your revenue and do exactly. things. So I, I'm with yeah, I would, those distractions. I would focus, I would focus on the on the moneymaker. Mm -hmm. If if you're if you're dipping into more pools, I would focus on the moneymaker, the one that's really the focus of your business make that put the systems in place get that sort of on auto run and then you're you're probably gonna be surprised that that frees up time that you can then dedicate to improve that next one you know put that effort in it i think they're too close together the the power scrubber deep cleaning with whichever lvp or hardwood you do but if I wanted to get into, let's say, uh, carpet cabinets, why not? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to focus on learning how to do and sell and source cabinets and materials for that trade when my flooring uh, outfit is not on point. Yeah. If I if I feel I, I sort of had a similar situation uh, last year, I'm trying to focus on you know more custom more high-end uh projects get that price up in parallel work on the scales to get the skills up as well mm -hmm. but i i had an opportunity i that that sort of came my way i was promised a ton of work like tens of thousands of square feet of lower skill lower pay but big volume so I dedicated some efforts to that. And before long, I saw that I was kind of cheating that other side a bit. I lost focus on that other side. And I started to get hiccups on that other side mm -hmm. with the high skill, high price uh, project. Yeah. So I, I had to just, you know, rip the bandaid off of the high volume and just walk away from that. That was definitely not a direction I, I wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. It still needed more effort and attention to get it to be somewhat on auto run, but I wasn't willing to because that was not the direction I wanted to go in. Correct. It could get so big that you, you get distracted and you have to completely let go of what you actually want to do. And then yeah, you're not like, going to do any high end you know, stuff. It's not worth it. You're you're promised uh, like uh, eighty thousand square feet of pre-finished glue down this year, and you'll be like, okay, sure, I can, you know, I'll train a crew and put the crew on that, and you know, it's not rocket science. It was pretty straightforward actually, mm -hmm. but then it needed quite a bit more attention than just that. Cause I got the crew, I put it on it. But there were there were some extras, some extra trips, extra phone calls, a lot of a lot of time that had to go into that. Yep, it, it becomes and a distraction. It wasn't, it wasn't really worth. Yeah, and it it was it was my mistake. 
it, it kind of relates to what we were talking about because the way I, I job costed those jobs, I didn't figure out those extras. Mm-hmm. You know, and that actually pushed it under the threshold, under my limit of, you know, okay, this much effort is acceptable for it to make it work and to put it on my schedule. Yeah. So you have new numbers, you've cut out a sub, you've cut out a couple sub crews and you're working Mm -hmm. just yourself. So projected the rest of the year, because we're almost, well, we're, we're almost finished with month five as we record this. Mm -hmm. So where are you, if you don't mind sharing, like revenue wise, profitability wise, these first five months this year versus the first five months last year when you were running a couple of crew subbing as well as your yourself and your, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, as far as amount I'm under, but my reference is not necessarily last year because last year I had some things happen and some things kind of fall in my lap accidentally that made it uh, an incredible year. Mm-hmm. So my, my gauge is 2019, and I can tell you that I'm beating 2019 easily. Well, you're running better if numbers I, now, though. So even though your revenue yes. is down, is your are your margins higher versus 2020 so far? Uh, yes, yes, they are. Then you're winning. It, it, I am. Then, then, then it's everything you're doing is is working because if even if your revenue is lower, if your margins are better you're still running a better business. Hopefully. <laughs> that, I mean, that's... At the end of the day, you can still put good money in your pocket at a higher margin with less revenue, right? That, that's that's the goal. And then you have less headaches because you're not tracking down three, four jobs at a time. You're worrying about one project, one crew, one homeowner, and the next project and maybe the next one right maybe a couple phone calls an email or two a text message something like that like that's better than 20 text messages 18 phone calls three emails 18 trips to the distributor (laughs) (laughs) yeah so for sure i uh I love it, dude. And I'm glad you're doing better. I'm glad that you you've put these things in place. You you're feeling more successful. You probably feel much more confident in yourself and your business. Uh, I actually, yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, I'm nowhere close to being done. Mm-hmm. I'm just starting, but I'm, it actually motivates me. After just doing a few things, seeing the results, it motivates me to do more and to do better. You know. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I I love it, man. It's once you start working on that stuff and you actually see, right? It's it's one thing to watch your bank account grow and be like, "Oh, look, I have some money." And like that was exciting at first. But once you actually know what can grow the bank account and how it works, then now you're now you're talking. Now you have something to get really excited about and and go and yeah. and work on. And then it's exciting to go and put it in place and see how it works. And so now not only can you go and make the homeowner happy because you have awesome hand skills that they, they fall in love with. I honestly, I think flooring is probably the most rewarding trade there is. They, it's instant gratification all the way through. They're amazed when the finish comes off, the carpets pulled out, the flooring goes down or what, like they just constantly the homeowners walk through and they're like, Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So yeah, it, it definitely has a big wow factor when you, when you, when you get that, it makes it easy to go and do your, your job every day. But then when you can sit down at the desk and you can see that what you produce during the day is actually putting money in your pocket because you understand the numbers coming in the, mm-hmm. the whole experience becomes rewarding overall. I agree. I agree. And that, that feeling of being in control, mm-hmm. you know, gives you that confidence and motivation to handle whatever was lacking before and get that straight, you know, one step at a time, but you got to take that step. Well, do you feel like you're putting out, like, did you feel like you had a lot of fires you were chasing before 
and now things are much more organized and streamlined and and in order it's not as chaotic so as i as i got my skills to where i wanted them to be there's still room to grow in that perspective too Mm -hmm. when i was faced with these other aspects the financial part the you know accounting marketing uh keeping the the records on clients on you know the job costing all of that those were like overwhelming because i was i was happy you know doing the work and i got to a point where yeah i had no secrets i had no issues there was no effort into getting the job to where i wanted it to but the minute I had to sit down in front of a computer and start working on those other things, it was just, you know, a daunting task. Yeah. Until I bit the bullet, you know, saw those other guys, chose what I want to do and where I want to go and started mm-hmm. working in that direction. It was, you know, it's that inertia that you're good where you are that's a big con when you're figuring out pros and cons that's a big con when making the decision okay let me start improving the business aspect because a lot of people are fine where they are a lot of them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. work keeps coming checks are written you know they got the, the the quality down but those other things the 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 longer you go without getting those systems in place and working on them and making them efficient, the harder it is going to be when you do start. Yeah. Well, and you're doing a lot of, it sounds like you're doing a lot of this work yourself. You're, you're, yes, you're calculating I, out the numbers, which is, which is good and admirable. Now folks, you don't have to do that. Like if you want to provide your bookkeeper with the fact that, you know, you kept track and you used 1060 grit belts and, 580 grit belts and and one 100 grit belt and you you know you know that you had your employee had 80 hours on the project and you had 65 like if you keep track of all this stuff and you give it to the people that are handling your books they can keep track of it and quickbooks can job cost this stuff out for you right you you write down like I'm nitpicky. I don't have all of my stuff perfect, but when I get a receipt, if I'm buying supplies for a specific project, I'll write the name of the project on my receipt. When I scan it and send it to my bookkeeper, it gets added to that invoice. So it goes against that project. If I'm buying yep. caulking because I just have to, you know, I'm going to go buy a 30 pack of caulk, then that just goes under supplies and it's general miscellaneous because I'm going to use it on it could be five jobs. It could be 15 projects. It depends on how much baseboard I'm doing in a given month or two months or however long that 30 tubes of caulk is going to last. But, you know, you can you can sit there and start labeling these things and somebody else can do it for you. You don't have to be the one to sit down behind the computer, but you have to be able to have the skills to communicate with them and explain what you want why you want it, and then you have to ask for the reports and actually break them down. Like, you're going to have to do some work, but you don't have to be the one to, like, sit behind the computer and really start doing all of it. Yeah, delegating is another another thing that uh, is important in my in my view. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people are control freaks like me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think we all it, are. I find it... That's why yeah, I find it hard to. I, I used to find it hard to delegate, like let somebody else do it when I can probably do it better, you know. Yeah. But it's it, it all comes down to time. I'm more efficient, and you know, I'm better off going to do what I do best and letting somebody else do what they do best Correct. if that's what I need done. You know, I, I was having a discussion with my wife. I had my third pinhole leak in my pipes in my house uh, a couple of months ago. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to repipe the entire house myself. Oh, and she's like, are you, are you crazy? Yeah, I can do it. I mean, I remodeled my house. I, I did the plumbing in the bathrooms and everything else. She's like, you know what? How about you go do floors? You make 
a lot of money doing floors and pay somebody who does repiping. And I think you're going to be better off when you, when you draw the line. The mm-hmm. bottom line mm-hmm. is they're going to do a better job and faster than you would. And the savings, because you're doing the repiping, are going to be insignificant because you yes. could have made more money doing what you do best. 100%. Same thing with accounting, marketing, whatever. You need your website rebuilt. Yeah, there's so many programs today that you can put that time in. But maybe that time would be – you would be more profitable spend, profitable spending that time doing what you do best and delegating that task to somebody who does that for a living, you know? Correct. I, I 100% so, agree. It, look, I will gladly pay someone to paint my house, put carpet in it if I wanted carpet. I, I don't – pick something, man. I'll hire a handyman to replace my – garbage disposal these days probably because i don't want to deal with it because i can do i'm better off going and trying to set up a a consultation and sell a project than i am spending the hour to replace the garbage disposal it's not necessarily worth my time same thing with your trucks i know a lot of guys love to like oh i can save money and work on my truck dude paying somebody (laughs) a couple hundred bucks to do your brakes how much money can you make if you weren't doing your breaks? Let alone, you, I know you're going to have to do them on the weekend. Man, the weekend ain't time to be doing that stuff unless your kids want. I mean, if your kids want to get involved, like, okay. But like, it's time for our families. We yeah. should only be working Monday through Friday. I, I, sand and finish is a little bit different. I get you got to get people back in their homes and telling them you're not going to coat their floor over the weekend is kind of a no-no, but... It, if that's the way you want to run your business, you can run your business that way. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, essentially, you know, if you run out and do a quick coat, that's a different story than being out there working eight, 10 hour days on, on Saturday and Sundays doing seven day weeks. Like you, you gotta, you gotta draw the line somewhere. And this is, this is where having the systems is going to come in handy because you're going to know where you make money. You're going to know how, where you're best served. And if you can actually afford to pay somebody to repipe your house, I agree. And if it, how many and, times and, have you been? <laughs> go ahead. How many times have you been on a job where you were doing the floors and maybe the owner asked you, uh, "See, I'm trying to move this door to that wall to this bathroom, and it's just a little patch of drywall, and it's, it's just a little trim around the door, and you could do that, right?" I mean, but if I really wanted it? to, no. Not at yeah, all. is it really worth it? Because you're gonna charge her whatever five, six hundred dollars to, to do that. But the time it takes you to do that project for five, six hundred dollars, you could probably make fifteen hundred doing what you do best on another project. Correct. I don't you need know? the distraction. It goes back to you know I don't need to be out cleaning LVP. I need to be installing it. It makes me better money at this point. Now, if yeah. I had a couple crews that were like were running like clockwork, then yes, it would be worth my while to find some 20 year old stoner to go and clean floors with a power scrubber all day. (laughs) That would Mm -hmm. be totally up my alley. That's going to be profitable. No, no problem. But if you don't, you don't know what you're doing. Takes takes energy and effort to get that. Correct. Guy, you know, going and get systems in place on that. So that time and energy are taken away from something else. Correct. You, know? I, you, I have to have the one thing running like clockwork in order to make sure I can invest my time elsewhere. So, yep. No, nope, I agree, man. I, I think it's the the revelations that you've you've had and come to and been able to see by seeing your numbers. I think they're great. I think that that gives anybody that doubts that you can make money at the desk. Uh, Look, Mike has proven you wrong, right? He, his own wife yes. told him, like, pay somebody to repipe the house. You're going to make more by going to the floors. But I guarantee you that if he went and sat down and looked at his numbers, he can look at what he made and the time it took the person to repipe his house, and he'll show you that he still came out ahead. Oh, I I, literally, the, the money that I paid for that project, uh, I made that on a job that happened the very following week, a job that came out of nowhere. 
you know, it wasn't on the schedule, but I could fit it in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because we were more efficient on the job that it did have scheduled. You know, we did have to kick ass a little bit more that week, but I was able to fit in that other job where you know, it's what I do for a living. I'm good at it. Yep. So I made the same, the same, roughly the same money uh, that I spent on the repiping the house. Right on. Yeah. And there's no leaks in the repiping. There might have been leaks in what I would have done. Mm-hmm. So there you go. All right, man. Uh, I know you're on Instagram because that was also in the other episode we did. Uh, that was actually the mm-hmm. main focus. Was uh, the the subs were <laughs> jacking your your project photos, not your personal photos, but they were using your projects as uh, their own work on Instagram. So where do we find you on Instagram? Anywhere else we can find you if people want to reach out to it's- you? How do they How do they reach you? So I'm uh, on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, but I'm only active in the in the flooring groups. Um, you can reach me by phone six seven eight four six eight five eight eight two. Instagram is probably the best bet. Uh, MSCS Inc. MSCS Inc. That's my handle. Right on, man. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate. Uh... I appreciate the phone call to initiate this. I appreciate you um, coming on. I, I appreciate you putting up with me, man. <laughs> I'll be honest. Hey, my my I, pleasure, man. Thanks for thanks for everything you do for us mm-hmm. with the uh, with the podcast. And uh, as always, pleasure talking to you. Oh, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. All right, man. I will talk to you later. Enjoy your uh, enjoy your trip. Thanks, man. Looking forward to it. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. That's all the time we have for this week. To keep the conversation going, head on over to the Floor Academy Facebook group. Be sure to subscribe so you can hear each and every episode. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and most major podcast directories. Don't forget to leave a review and let us know what you think about the show. If you would like to be a guest, have questions or feedback, you can email us at FloorAcademyPodcast at gmail.com. You can help support the show by becoming a patron over at www.patreon.com slash floor academy. Remember to learn while you earn.